It has been 42 days since President Trump, on his way to visit victims of the El Paso and Dayton mass shootings, announced on the White House lawn that, quote, I'm looking to do background checks. 42 days of no action. Last night, 21 Democratic senators took to the Senate floor to call on Congress to expand background checks on firearm purchases. But it might all be for nothing. As before Democrats took to the floor, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said the Senate is in a holding pattern on gun legislation, waiting to hear what the president is willing to sign. But as they wait, students across the country have returned to school and a new normal, preparing for potential attacks. In 2018 alone, 30 people were killed and 50 injured in eight school shootings, averaging one every 45 days. This morning, members from the gun safety advocacy group, Sandy Hook Promise, have released a new back-to-school school shootings prevention PSA. We warn you, this video is very hard to watch. This year, my mom got me the perfect bag for back-to-school. These colorful binders help me stay organized. These headphones are just what I need for studying. These new sneakers are just what I need for the new year. This jacket is a real must-have. My parents got me the skateboard I wanted. It's pretty cool. These scissors really come in handy in art class. These colored pencils, too. These new socks, they can be a real lifesaver. And I finally got my own phone to stay in touch with my mom. <laughs> Joining me now, co-founder of the Sandy Hook Promise, Nicole Hockley. Nicole's six-year-old son, Dylan, was killed in the Sandy Hook shooting back in 2012. Nicole, my friend, thank you. When I saw that ad, or the PSA, the first thing I thought at the end, when that young woman was texting, I love you, mom, I thought, your son was six. He didn't even get to do that. No. So where did this PSA come from? Why do this? Because I don't think enough parents understand what their kids are experiencing every day in school now. You know, Jake's in 10th grade now. Your other son. My, my son that survived. And last week, every single day, they, they practiced a different form of an active shooter drill or an evacuation. This is how we're traumatizing our kids now. We're teaching them what to do when violence occurs rather than teach them how to prevent it from happening. And that's the point of this PSA, to kind of shock parents and say, this is not what school should be about. We need to, we need to take action to prevent these. Shock them into what? What kind of action are you looking for? Because 21 members of Congress last night got up and spoke about this. And before they even uh, made it into the room, Mitch McConnell said, we're in a holding pattern. Well, that's unacceptable. And I think more parents need to speak up about how unacceptable that is. There's legislation in Congress right now waiting for a vote more pressure on Congress is needed to get to that vote, more pressure on Mitch McConnell as well. Um, these aren't controversial policies that are being debated, universal background checks, extremist protection orders. This is not about taking anything away from anyone. It's about keeping people safe. And what I want people to do is be outraged by this new normal of schools, shootings, and school violence, and to talk to their kids about the signs, because kids can help prevent it today while we continue to put pressure on Congress for legislation. Then who are the people and what is the argument against this? There is no argument against this. How can, no one is for gun violence. No one is for school shootings. Everyone wants their kids to be safe. This, these are non-controversial, no-cost programs that we provide in schools. They've already prevented so many school shooting threats and suicides. These are simple actions that we can take today, but also the policies they're not controversial either when you really look at them and understand what the bills are doing. This is about responsible access. This is about safety. This isn't about taking anything away from anyone. This is about when someone's in crisis, what can we do to help them from hurting themselves? When Sandy Hook Promise was founded, not long after you lost Dylan, did you think we would be here today with all of these shootings continuing, that in 2019 you'd be putting out a PSA with a teenage girl and a bloodied leg uh, being tied off by a gym sock. 
I had hoped that we would never get to this stage. I had hoped that we would be in a position of solving this so much sooner, um, but that's not the case. And instead, we're seeing the violence increasing. Last year was the worst year on record for school shootings. This, how much further can we go? How much further are we as parents willing to accept the danger that we're putting our kids in? Then what does it tell you about gun culture? Because there are millions of parents across this country, around the world, who absolutely send their kids off to school every day and want them to be safe. The fact that we're not seeing these changes and we are seeing an increase in gun violence, mm -hmm. what does that tell you about the power of gun culture? It tells me that people are still too afraid because this is a fight. As soon as you mention the word gun, it becomes a fight and no one's listening to each other. And there's a different conversation that needs to be had. Keeping kids safe is not about guns. It's about prevention and protection. If we just stop talking about the gun all the time, then I think we'll be more open to listening to each other and sharing good solutions and ideas. What has been the response to this PSA from lawmakers, from individuals? So far, very positive. Um, uh, we only launched this morning, and there's already thousands of views. I mean, every year we launch another PSA that teaches people that school shootings and violence is preventable when you know the signs, and we ask people to go to the website, download the brochures, have conversations with your kids, bring the programs to your schools. But it's really about changing that conversation so that people know that there's more to this than just policy action, that we, there are community-based solutions as well that can complement the policy actions that we're seeking. Nicole, thank you. Thank you for your life's work. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate it. My dear friend and Dylan and Jake's mom, Nicole Hockley. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.